Our culture has a complicated relationship with rest. We live in a world that tells us to go, 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 and when you are done, keep going. It is hard to rest. With the expectations that fill us in our everyday lives, whether it's in our home, in our workplace, in our regular routines, we feel guilty when we lay down on the couch to take a nap. We should be doing something. And often in the church, we know this concept of Sabbath, this day of the week, this seventh day on which God rested. And I would venture that to say that the, the relationship with rest in the church is maybe even more complicated for us because many of us feel guilty when we rest and guilty when we don't rest. Anybody feel me there? We have this complicated relationship because we know that God has made us to, to take a break from work. But we feel guilty when we do, and we feel guilty when we don't. And so this morning, my sermon is on rest, but it's also on guilt. <laughs> uh, no, it's on, I hope, that as we walk away from this, that rest, and work would no longer be something that we feel guilty about. But that true rest is something that we would long for deep within our souls. If you have your Bible, I invite you to open up to Matthew. Actually, Luke. I'm used to preaching in Matthew. Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Luke chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 1, we read these words. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Jesus, then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so and his hand was completely restored. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law were furious and began to discuss with one another what they might do to Jesus. We have two stories that Luke records for us to help us get a better picture of what Jesus intends for rest. We see in this passage that Sabbath rest is not about satisfying God. Let me say that again. Sabbath rest is not about satisfying God. Let's take the first story that Luke tells us here in Luke chapter 6. Jesus and his disciples, it's a Saturday afternoon. Saturday was the, 
the Sabbath day of the Jewish people, a, a day which God had commanded them to rest, to cease from work. It's, it's rooted in the creation of count in which God, uh, dur- over the course of six days, created the, the earth, the sun, the moon, the stars. He fills the earth. And on each day, He says, it is good. And He finishes His work and He says, it's very good. And then on the Sabbath day, he ceased from his rest. And he commanded his people Israel to do the same. That on the seventh day of the week, they would set aside that time. And this morning, I'd like us to consider why God gave that command. Do we follow that command here in our world today? As followers of Jesus, are we under the same law that God gave to the people of Israel? And how does that relate to us? We, we looked at in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus is the fulfillment, the ultimate culmination of the law of God. And so what does Jesus mean? And what does Jesus want us to get from this concept of Sabbath. Jesus and his disciples are walking through the grain field. It's on that day, the Sabbath, that they take some of the grain, they rub it in their hands and the husk to get out the grain inside and they eat some of it. And the Pharisees, those who are, were the holier than thou type, the, the people who had all the religion uh, badges on their sleeve, they were watching. They see Jesus and his disciples doing what was forbidden to do on the Sabbath. But you see, the Pharisees had their own set of rules. We sometimes do this in the church where we take what God has said and we expand it and make our own variation of it. The Pharisees had God's law of what to do with the Sabbath and they... They had commentaries on the law. They had laws upon laws of of how we were to cease from work on the Sabbath. And for the Pharisees, the Sabbath was a day of regulations. A day of what you're not supposed to do. And so they questioned Jesus. Why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And and Jesus answers, and he refers to a story in 1 Samuel chapter 21. David and his men are uh, renegades on the run because Saul is out for his life. And uh, David and his men are hungry. And there was uh, the way that God had designed worship in the temple was that... uh, there was bread that was consecrated and it would sit on the altar for a week and it was part of their uh, worship practice as God had laid out for them. And part of what we see in the Old Testament with the practice of worship and how God designed it is that uh, God gives a lot of details. You ever notice that in the Old Testament? There's a lot of details that God gives. And one of the things that we take away from that as we look at it uh, from our perspective here, looking at God's Word, is that God is a God who is holy, who, who cares about the details. He cares about uh, uh, how we come to worship Him. He cares about specifically our hearts. And so David and his men go into uh, this sacred place and they eat the bread that was consecrated only for priests to eat uh, because they're hungry. And it it seems like a, a strange example for Jesus to give here, but Jesus is making simply a parallel between him and his disciples and David and his men is that they were both hungry. And they were satisfying that need. The Pharisees had made the Sabbath about what we don't do. What we, the rules we abide by to satisfy God's law. 
But here in Luke chapter 6, Jesus is pointing us to a truth that the Sabbath rest, true Sabbath rest, is not about satisfying God. It's not about living up to a rule. Jesus wants us to get this morning, I want you to hear this this morning, that true Sabbath rest is not about satisfying God. It's about finding your satisfaction in God. Sabbath rest was not designed as this rule. You you take a break from work, and, and if you do that, you'll satisfy God's standard. Sabbath rest was always about finding your satisfaction in God. In fact, that's what God told the people of Israel back in Exodus 31. I'm going to turn there real briefly. You can just listen as I read this, because I think this is important. Exodus 31, verse 12, the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This, now listen to this. This will be a sign between me and you for generations to come so that, and this is the purpose, you will know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Sabbath is not about satisfying God. It's about finding our satisfaction in God. It is about realizing, taking a break, taking a step back from our busy lives in which we are striving, we are constantly doing to create an identity of who we are, and we stop. We create rhythms of rest in our everyday lives to remind ourselves that God is God and we are not, and our satisfaction does not come from the things that we do. Some of you this morning need to hear this word again. That your satisfaction, your identity, your meaning in life does not come from the things that you do. And Sabbath has always been, and I would say continues to be to this day about that very truth. That your meaning in life does not come from your actions. From your work that you do. It doesn't even come from what you do for God. Your identity does not come from doing things for God. It comes from knowing that he is God, and we are not. And our identity is shaped by the reality that God loves you despite what you do. God loves you no matter what work you accomplish. And that is the meaning of rest. You see, Jesus is is pushing the Pharisees on their idea that Sabbath was about satisfying God's law. Jesus is setting that aside and saying, you're missing the whole point. Because Jesus really wants to push the Pharisees to realize that Sabbath observance without the purpose of the Sabbath is simply secular. Our world knows that you take the weekends off. Our world knows that rest is good for us, but the purpose of rest isn't to take a break from work. The purpose of rest is to remind ourselves that our satisfaction in life doesn't come from what we do. It comes from the fact that we simply are loved by a God who is holy And we don't measure up to that. And he loves us anyways. Enough to die for us. You see, Sabbath rest, as we look at it in in light of Jesus, Sabbath rest is simply a reminder to us of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus loves us enough to die for us. And we don't earn that. Our work, our good works, they don't earn that. And that's what 
Jesus says here in verse 5, this is, this is a hugely important verse for us as we consider what does the Sabbath mean for us today. Jesus says to them, verse 5, the Son of Man, this is a term that he uses to refer to himself and his messianic role, the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. You say, what does that mean? I think Luke knew when, we were re- when he was writing this, he would, he would know that we would ask, what does that mean? And so he tells another story about the Sabbath. He says on another Sabbath, Jesus is in the synagogue. And uh, there in the synagogue, there was a man whose right hand was shriveled. We don't know how uh, long this hand had been like it was, but the Pharisees, again, are out to catch Jesus breaking the law on the Sabbath. Jesus knows this, and so he takes this moment as a teaching moment for for his disciples, for the Pharisees, and I think for, as Luke records it, for you and me to learn what the Sabbath is truly about. Jesus calls this man up in front of everybody. Jesus wants to teach us something, and he, he says to everyone there, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it. Jesus wants us to get this morning that the Sabbath is not about the law of rest. It's about the Lord of rest. Jesus is the Lord of rest and he points us here in this moment while this, man, this man's hand is still shriveled and they're standing in front of everybody. Imagine the scene with me and Jesus lays out a scenario. Which is, is lawful to do good or to do evil? The question seems simple, but when it comes to work on the Sabbath, how do you answer that? And Jesus is pointing us to this mo- in this moment to the reality that the Sabbath is not about restrictions. It's about restoration. It's about restoration. And Jesus takes that shriveled hand. And notice what it says. He looked at them all, verse 10, and then said to the man, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. I think Luke intentionally uses this word here, restored, because that is what the Sabbath was always meant to do. Rest is about restoration. It's about regeneration. It's about replacing our satisfaction not in what we do, but in who God is. And so, we step back from this and ask, okay, Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. Do we here in, in post uh, the cross of Jesus in which He perfectly fulfilled the law for us? Do we have to set aside one day a week and, 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 not, and cease from work? I would tell you that that is probably a good idea, but you don't need to. Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is our rest. Jesus is where we find restoration, where we find satisfaction for our souls. And so Jesus is really pushing the boundaries of how the Pharisees of the day understood the Sabbath. And I want to push the boundaries this morning in how you think about rest. Because rest is not about a law that God has given you. Rest is about restoration that God wants to give you. God wants you to have regular rhythms of rest in which you stop from your work 
You stop from your regular rhythms of doing things. And I'm not just talking about the work that you uh, get a paycheck for. I'm talking about the work that you do as a family, as a parent, as a child, as a whatever your regular rhythms are, you need to find moments, you need to find ways to rest from that to remind yourself of the reality that your identity is not found in those things. And I'd encourage you this morning, maybe it's a day of the week that you find time to rest. But my biggest encouragement to you is not just to have a day of the week, but to find regular moments in your day, in your week, in your season of life, in your year, where you set aside time to, to be still. And read Psalm 62, that you, my soul finds rest in God alone. This morning I wanted to kick off our series called Healthy Habits, uh, Spiritual Disciplines, Intentional Disciplines to Help Us Grow in Jesus. And the reason I started with rest is because this is how God started the universe. Is He worked. And your work is good. But He rested. And He created space. And he made the example for us to create space in our everyday, everyday rhythms of life to create space to remember that he is the Lord our God and he alone is holy. There are sermons that I have to preach where I have to confess to the Lord that I'm not good at this. I'm not good at stopping. Many of you know that Mary and I, uh, August 2014, started making videos on the internet. And we, for three years, we created a new video every single day. Every day, I would spend hours editing a video, publishing it online, And uh, this past year, uh, some of you, uh, through your encouragement and through Mary and I just coming to a place where we needed some rest, we needed restoration, we we decided to to stop making it to one video, one day of the week, we would stop, we wouldn't film anything, and we would rest. Did we have to do that to satisfy God? No. No. Does it help us find our satisfaction in God? You better believe it. Sabbath rest is not about satisfying God. It is about finding your satisfaction in God. So let's do away with the guilt factor. And let's start longing for restoration. When life is busy and you are going from one thing to the next driving the kids across town wherever they need to go and you're, you're, you feel like you're never doing enough at work and you feel like the home is a mess always, you know what? Leave the dishes on the counter and go take a walk. Your soul needs it. Because the longer we go without Sabbath rest, And I use the term Sabbath rest to refer to rest with its true intention of finding satisfaction in God. The longer we go without finding Sabbath, true Sabbath rest, the easier it is to think that our identity and our meaning in life is found in ourselves. We need it. It's my prayer that we would long for it. The Sabbath is not about satisfying God. It is about finding our satisfaction in God. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29, 
I'm just going to read this, and I want you to hear these words from Jesus. I mean, don't take, don't take my word for it that rest is good. Um, I hope you can walk away with these words from Jesus as an invitation to your soul. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, he says, Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Would you pray with me? God, I ask this morning that you would help us find our satisfaction in you. And Lord, I pray for those this morning who are hearing this message and feel weary, who feel overwhelmed and burdened by the busyness of life, by the financial demands, by the family concerns. Lord, I pray that they would come to you and find rest for their souls. And Lord, I pray for for those of us who are feeling challenged to to make regular rhythms. Maybe it's a, a, a half hour each morning before we do anything to just be still before you, to to open your word and remind ourselves of truth, to to simply sit in, in, in prayer for a few moments in our day. But Lord, would you help us, whatever it looks like, to make regular rhythms of rest in which we have true Sabbath rest, in which we find our satisfaction in you. Lord, thank you for this reminder this morning that it's not about rules, it's not about regulations, but it's about a relationship with you where you want to restore our souls. So God, would you do that work in us? And Lord, I, I, I pray that... Uh, Even as we leave here this morning, uh, maybe we need to write down intentional steps that we need to take this week. Write down some goals of of moments, but put it in our phone calendar. Whatever it is, Lord, help us to take intentional steps to remember that you are God and we are not. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.